Oh, he's got, got it. it! On the finger end! Tim. All right. What's up? Welcome Go back. Em. Go get them. Guys, recognize this guy? Well, maybe. <laughs> they haven't seen the video yet. No, but probably it's, haven't. It's coming. So by the time they see this, yeah, they'll, they'll know, know who you are. All right, cool. Where are we at, Scott? Lake of the Woods. All right. <laughs> Canada. What kind Go of, get them. What kind of weird dance is that? I don't know. <laughs> That's how they dance in Canada. <laughs> Wisconsin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wisconsin, Chicago, I don't yeah, know. I know. That, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have show to me that one. look of uh, disgust again, young fella. Shoot. Shake your head. Like, oh, man. It's okay. Well, you got better moves? Let's see them. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, guys. We're excited to be here. First day out. We're going to see what lives in this place. Oh, All right. man. Crazy. Stay tuned. I have no idea where we are. We're in Canada, bro. You have no sense of direction? No sense of direction. I gotta look at a map or something. Let's see, so that sun I think is over there. It's hard to tell if the clouds. That's west, east. I think the fish are right there. Come in. We just launched though. How could he possibly be right there? That doesn't make any sense. I'm not gonna feel bad about my figure eight at all. Because I've actually caught quite a few fish in my eight. Just not musky. Small. Oh sh Did you see that one? No. Nope. High 30s, low 40s. Good. <laughs> Should have out not getting. I like my figure eight. Oh crap! Yeah. We've been fishing for 10 minutes. Just raised the first one. Here we go. John? Here, watch your left foot just in case. Hey! Oh boy. It is a pike! Nice! Oh, cousin of our quarry. Nice pike, man. Oh, hey, Sean. Thank you for that. Rad. <laughs> Call it Frankenbait? I like it. The Frankenbait. First victim. Wanna breathe a little? So, word on the street is you've never eaten a northern pike. Never had a pike. So this is new to me the last couple years. Uh, apparently they're really good eating and I would concur. Uh, you know, I've heard about it. Uh, interested in trying it out. All right, so let's do, let's, we'll put that one in the box and we'll do a catch and cook segment on that for you boys and girls at home. Right on. That's a good start. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pull up to the left and see the same thing. Some old, some new with the same name. No matter because we all with the same. Hey, hey, dream game, dream game, dream game. Trying to catch that lucky 23 man. Never settle, catch fish, not feeling safe. Got that aptly named body bag. Oh, yeah. It looks pretty lively. <laughs> Smell that.
Dude, I smelt some bad things in my time. But the combination of chlorine, thousands upon thousands of carcasses, I'm sure. It's like, hmm. It's like a fish cleaning glory hole station. This is all bad. Front my fish clean mat. Oh god. <laughs> I really hope you've got the smell -o meter uh, turned up for that thing. This is bad. So we got ourselves a, a northern pike that Scott caught yesterday. He's never eaten one before. And I think this is one of those uh, fish that gets underutilized as table fare. Because honestly, I had never really heard of people eating northern pike until I tried it the very same day that I had my first walleye. And at first I was kind of uh, concerned with eating my share of walleye because of its popularity as a food fish. But honestly, as I continued to eat the pike, I kind of enjoyed the texture and the flavor of the pike over the walleye. And these guys are often considered like a rough fish. But if people like talk about throwing them up on the bank and such, and I'm like, dude, you guys are crazy because this, look at this meat. It's just white, clean, big flakes. Great fish, especially fried. I mean, this is better than any of that cod stuff that they serve at, at these all these uh, upper woods restaurants on Fridays. I think it's just like a barracuda does at home. Nice long. And I'm being a little bit more careful than I would a barracuda, but same basic concept. Try to maximize this filet and what I'm going to show you guys especially with fish of this shape is before you take one side off go ahead and just trace the outline of your filet and then do it on the other side so it's not all lopsided and then cut down the middle here on this side Lose a little meat, but this is a nice 33 inch pike. But you will come here. That way, you'll get two nice clean fillets on both sides with maximum meat retention. So, now that we've got this thing slabbed out, I like leaving the skin attached to get the skinning process out of the way really easy just gives you a nice handle here takes the skin right off just like that okay so, so one of the challenging things about these pike is this series of Y bones that run along the lateral line almost on its shoulder and I know guys that'll just like cut like a big strip of it out but you know we're just gonna pick around it rinse it off That's some light. Got minimal waste here going in the fish glory hole. Can you guys hear that? Because I know you guys can't feel that. But these northern pike are notorious for having this series of Y bones throughout the meat that can make them a huge pain in the butt to eat. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm just pretty much cutting around them uh, to eliminate as many of the bones as possible. So I've got a quarter of a filet here, and that series of bones runs just next to the lateral line. So if you actually cut down 
below them and just kind of feel them with your knife. You can feel where you can get like the edge going down towards where the belly used to be. And this is really similar how I, to how I used to cut halibut at home because of the unique way that the anatomy on those fish lays out. You kind of have to like cut down that lateral line and then fillet off of that. So I'm kind of treating that series of Y bones almost like the actual vertebrae. So I'm feeling for them with my knife feeling for them for my, with my knife right there and then you kind of cut down at an angle like that and that whole belly section now is free of bones and although this kind of butchers the presentation that's the nice thing about fish fries is at the end of the day it doesn't really matter what it looks like you got a nice clean piece of boneless pike meat and then on the other side, we're gonna we're gonna do the exact same thing, and you can you can feel those Y bones really prominently, and it's kind of a similar technique. I'm gonna feel for the edge of it with my knife, and you kind of almost cut down, and really treat it like it was a whole fish, like if you're filleting a walleye or a crappie. You can see here it stops my knife. You can hear it. Click, 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 click. And that is the point you want to kind of cut down to and then turn your blade and then shave off that meat. This is coming off the upper half of that loin. You can see how the split of the bones is still in this chunk of meat here. And although you lose some meat, it just makes for a much more enjoyable eating experience when you're not choking on bones. So that right there has got no bones in it. And once again, we're just gonna cover this up with this beautiful batter, drop it in this super hot iron skillet and enjoy some bone-free pike. Here's a little bit of that waste and all those Y bones are still in here. And here's the thing, there's still quite a bit of meat on this. So we're actually gonna use that same technique from the opposite corner and cut along the joint where the bones come together and that, that form the Y. And once again, we're just gonna shave it off. Let's see. And when you have a nice mid-sized pike in the 30 inch class like this, it kind of makes it worth the effort. Especially if you want to serve some pike to friends like Scott who have never had it before but don't want them to be turned off by almost dying. You can see there all those Y bones run along that stretch and that stretch and you know, there's a little bit of butchery involved, but for the most part, we were able to harvest all of that meat. I mean, that's that's a fillet off of a seven inch perch. You tell me, was it worth it? We're gonna find out. Slap. Normally, I like using panko breadcrumbs, but since we're out in the middle of nowhere, they didn't have the brand I like using for my coating that I like to do on fish fries. So we're gonna try something new today. This is a New Orleans style batter mix, pre-season. So the instructions say not to pre-season your fish, which I normally do. So we've got our D-bone pike fillets, and this is just one fish. It's a, it's a pretty good yield, boneless fillets. Then we got a bowl of some beaten egg. That beaten egg is gonna help that coating stick to the fish. And we're just gonna go ahead and dump this entire, actually let me get it out over the sink. So we're just gonna dump this entire fish fry seasoning into this bowl here. Smell that, smell it. it smells pretty good actually. This is a, from the same brand that we use for our crawfish boils. Good old Zatarans. So, 
Real simple process here, guys. Just take your clean piece of fish, get a nice coating of that egg batter, let the excess drip off. and then goes right into the breading. And this stuff looks like it coats pretty lightly. And it will be ready to drop in the hot oil. Dust off your excess breading and it drops right into the fryer. Good grief! <laughs> Cast iron, huh? I mean, I'm afraid to drop this thing. There's some substance there. You excited about your first pike eating experience? I am, I am. I was uh, expecting it to be uh, tabled and ready to eat though. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I'll, I'll step on it, my bad. That's the cup secret. You're part of the crew. Gotta get you on the other side. I think it's got bigger flakes, if that makes sense. No. Like, there's like nice substance when you bite into a piece of pipe. Just like when you bite into our swim bait. <laughs> That's important, because like you just started eating fish? Yeah. Yeah, I really, I mean, I ate fish out of restaurants the whole life here, here and there, but really not until about two, three years ago, started eating fish and experimenting with different batters and different ways to cook them. And uh, I think we're really starting to get it out. Then I'm really starting to look forward to it. I almost uh, kind of made fun of people <laughs> that would come up and uh, be all crazy about the walleyes and eating fish. And I uh, didn't realize maybe I just didn't get it. And it's pretty, pretty damn satisfying to catch it, clean it, eat it the same day, the next day. Bon appetit. Are we in French Canada? Mm -hmm. Applicable. Good. Tastes, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't eaten enough fish. It's not much different than uh, perch or walleye. That's good. That's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, that's in good company. I'd say it's a little, uh, maybe a little bit denser than walleye, but yeah. I think that's kind of a good thing. That's not even a real piece either. Yeah. That's like a little intro piece. Um, so I, I don't know if it makes sense to say leaner. Mm. Woo! Sizzling hot, boys and girls. Just kidding. <laughs> Oh, he's got it! On the finger eight!